Alright, welcome back everyone. So, this weekend I went out. I had to go to a few places, do some errands. Went out to the store. Uh, the parking lots were packed. Everyone was shopping. Uh, looked like life went back to normal all of a sudden. As soon as the weather warmed up, it's looking great. Although... I would say at least half the people are wearing masks. So I think this will be sort of a thing where you wear masks. And uh, I ordered some N95 Gators, Gator Necks. And I'm going to sell it to this one. I'm wearing it right now. As you can see. If I'm going to go out in public with masks, I'm definitely going to look cool or scare people. <laughs> All right, so let's get into what's going on. First of all, for all the new people in the private group, uh, when you sign up, you go to my website, right? You will receive a download instantly. And then... Also, there will be a link emailed to you the next day because I have to process everything. You will receive an email. By the way, never mind this 40% discount. I mean, technically, it is because originally it was 500 bucks, and then uh, I've been just discounting and discounting mainly because I just want to buy more mining shares myself, and I guess that's. It's a little pricey. I mean, that's what everyone else prices their products at that are similar to my services. But, um, you know, I'm going to undercut everyone because I'm so small. I can't compete on a larger scale because I don't have like an ad budget and whatnot marketing wise besides these videos. So it's 220 but you will also receive a 20% discount on that. Uh, you click on it. You add it to your cart. I've already done that. And then uh, you click apply discount code. But you have to use the link below this video in the description section to get to be able to click on this apply discount code. And then it'll, it'll take the price down to 175 Sale ends tonight. Um, and then you'll receive the email for the private group invite with instructions, intro video. You have to watch that. So you're on the same page as everyone else and you can find more um, downloads in the files folder and whatnot. All right, I just had to clear that up. All right. Um, so for the private group, I watched this video. It was good. Uh, real, it was a real vision video. And this guy explained it very, very well. He's been pretty much saying what I have been saying, but for some reason, everyone is having a hard time understanding and processing how this works uh, when it comes to inflation, deflation, and the dollar. There's multiple things going on here. All right, guys. Uh, I'm just going to read this real quick. Here's what I've been trying to explain, and this is why we will have much more QE this year and many years going forward. Remember, short term, like a few years, we will see stagflation in the U.S., but not hyperinflation. All right, so what I'm trying to say here is big on everyday items, prices are going to go up, all right, especially since we can't get cheap Chinese goods. That, this Cheap Chinese goods importing being imported into the US and Europe and in the western world has been hiding inflation for many many years now okay because the cheap substitutes hide the inflation cuz they're cheap goods the quality's not there but you're still getting the goods 
you understand now that the supply chain and this move away from China is going to happen um, your goods are going to come from more domestic markets but the the quality will be better but the prices will be much higher as well like I had to I went out to the store and I bought some drills I bought a chainsaw like Dewalt quality but I also was looking at um some Chinese goods because they're so much cheaper and I know that they're not going to be around I don't know when but eventually they're going to get bought up and then you're not going to get your hands on them so if you're looking for something that let's say opportunity cost right you don't want to spend five hundred dollars on a chainsaw which is quality that'll last you a life you're okay with spending a hundred dollars on a chainsaw right now because you'd rather take the 400 and let's say buy mining stocks with it okay um that's what i did so i bought the cheap chinese chainsaw because i just need a chainsaw right now to chop some wood um but uh i will buy the quality one later on i just think that spending four or three hundred dollars or five hundred on chainsaw right now opportunity cost wise is not smart because four hundred dollars let's say in a junior mining cap stock right could yield you much more in the coming years all right so that's another trick to life i literally everything in life i look at as an opportunity cost do i really need it now where can i put that capital i'd rather put the capital to work than to keep buying things that i don't really need or it's really not that of a necessity right all right um so let's get back to this let me read it again here's what i've been trying to explain blah 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 uh qe this year and many years going forward remember short term like a few years we will see stagflation in the U.S., but not hyperinflation. Emerging markets will see inflation and dollar demand rises. But, but one day, I can't read my, one day they may all default unless the Fed prints even more so emerging markets can afford to keep paying the interest on the debt. So what I'm trying to say here is that demand for dollars it's enormous globally because everyone's debt is denominated denominated in dollars and there really isn't yet a um, alternative to the dollar okay so what i've been saying is the peter schiff argument is everyone's going to default and then eventually they're not going to want the dollars and then the floor drops below the dollar right um and that will happen eventually but um brent johnson right the milkshake theory um is saying that they're not gonna default they're going to keep demanding the dollars because defaulting is i mean they're gonna go out of business basically um I think both is happening, right? Right now we're seeing the milkshake theory thing happening, right? So the, that's why the DXY keeps going higher and higher. Here's the DXY. It's at 100. Because the demand for dollars is enormous. Um, and I expect that that will continue for a bit longer. But the Fed... And the U.S. does not want it, the dollar to become extremely, extremely uh, valuable versus the rest of the world's fiat currencies because then the trade deficit keeps exploding and we can't export anything. And then later on, we can't even go back to a dollar peg to gold because that will be the end game. They will have to do that to stop the dollar from completely just becoming toilet paper right or less so it's a balancing act on the tightrope 
so you're I, I think we're going to see, okay, so many things, all the inflation in the past 10 years since 2008 has gone into what? Cars, universities, homes, commercial real estate, um, business, a lot of uh, corporations, publicly traded, stock market, all in bubble territory. Well, the bubbles are going to pop and all of that fiat's going to come out of them. If not disappear, a lot of it's just gonna go poof and vanish. That's when 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 defaults happen. That's when currency and debt just mad just gets just disappears, and that's deflationary. And that's what um uh what's his name? I forgot now. It doesn't matter. Um, but that's deflationary, right? That's Great Depression deflationary inflationary is going to happen because when these bubbles pop the money's going to rush out of them and where are they going to go they're going to go back onto the streets and things are going to get uh, the money velocity will pick up especially since the fed has no choice but to keep printing so the the, the balancing act is that the fed keeps yields on the 10 year capped by printing money and keeping the dollar below the 100 let's say or 110 dxy because the huge global demand for dollars keeps growing so the way that they balance it out is they just keep printing and then because they keep printing the dollar loses value but at the same time the demand is there so it doesn't so there's still more demand causing the pr the value of it to go up. But what's going to happen is right now in the next few years is they're going to just keep doing QE. And by doing that, the central bank, the Fed has become the central bank of the world. And then dollars will flow. So other countries, emerging markets, emerging economies can continue to pay that revolving door of debt and credit that they've taken on which props up the dollar but at the same time the dollar won't explode in value because like the milkshake theory predicts because the fed will just keep printing and it's a balancing act and you're going to see them they're they're, they're going to do less repos for a few months and then they're, again they'll pick up and then do less and pick up and in the it's it's just going to be a non-stop thing all right for for years probably or i don't know how long but i'm i'm assuming at least for a few more years something like that now eventually this can't can, this can't go on forever and this is why pure shift will, will be right in the end it's because the deficits they will keep growing exponentially hockey stick as all this keeps happening uh we're talking about states federal uh, credit card loans home mortgage everything the debt is just going to keep piling on and piling on and there's just a point where the debt itself is so immense and great that for one no one gets good credit credit ratings all across the board for private and um I mean, for everyone, even countries and treasuries and bonds and everything, corporations, the credit can't stay high. So once your credit ratings drop for everyone, you can't continue to take on more debt. And then you can't even pay off the debt you've accrued over the past decade or a few decades. And that's when the end game happens. And when that happens, what, what will happen is... The 10 year yield will spike. And that's, or the yields on treasuries will spike. And that's when the party comes to an end. And they won't be able to, the Fed won't be able to stop it. Even if they're printing to keep the yields down, uh, they're not going to be able to stop it. The bond vigilantes will come out. And then, even if they're printing trillions to stop it, people are just going to start seeing inflation go. I mean, it'll be noticeable. 
by the way, when I went to the store this weekend, prices haven't dropped. Well, not at the home improvement store. I mean, people, if anything, people have been doing home improvement for weeks now. Um, but eventually, I mean, you're you're going to see $15 hamburgers, all right? And when the psycho, when the psychology of the masses, the sheep, the normies, Joe Sixpack, when Joe's six pack of beer costs twenty dollars, the confidence in the entire system goes away, and it can happen quickly. And that's when inflation explodes because people go, because people realize, well, I need to spend my money because next month it might be worth even less. And it's the entire thing is a confidence game. It's all it is. And you know people keep trying to figure out what they're doing this and that guys it's not that complicated it's just a confidence game and it's not just domestically a confidence game it's globally a confidence game there is a i mean globally everyone's been buying up metals and asking for their metals back from the vaults in new york okay the confidence let's say at a higher level which is uh, global gov governments and banks, they already know. They know what I know. They're not that stupid. The confidence has been gone for many years. They've just been slowly pulling out of the system, getting their medals. And there's. Uh, I need to bring up some research and take a look at the balance sheets of central banks all across the world. It's been rising in physical uh, holdings of medals. That's why I'm pretty much very there's not this is the easiest trade in the world easiest investment strategy in the world just buy physical metals and take some extra cash you have and go gamble with it in mining stocks it's like it's a no-brainer absolute no-brainer matter of fact they've been manipulating it down with silver uh the amount of shorts that are on silver right now is 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 larger than the above ground supply so there's more people shorting silver than there is silver <laughs> do you understand by multiples by like 10x or something which is obviously manipulation so and, you know, there, there's other nefarious reasons why they do that. They keep silver down. It's because silver is used in everything. So it's a way to subsidize uh, companies like Apple, your smartphones and all this and that, uh, your TVs, computers, everything. Everything has silver in it. All right, guys? Your, um, your Bitcoin miners, okay? It all has silver. And guess what? It's being depleted, literally, because they've been artificially keeping the prices low for like a very long time now. Many years, if not decades. So because of that, when silver breaks loose and the manipulation ends and there's a giant short squeeze and gold and silver go limit up, and they will. It's not, it's not if, but when. Uh, the game's up. And that'll also signal to the markets that the dollar is losing its value because at the end of the day the ultimate world currency is is gold and then silver as well probably because um it's been depleted there's actually more gold above ground in bullion form than silver now for industrial purposes yeah there's more and then in electronics and everything uh but you know it's being used right all right, so where was I? We'll talk about the news at the end. I'll, I'll brush through a bunch of stuff. What's going on with the markets? Again, let me cover this real quick. Just a recap. Here, here's oil. And I showed you guys the correlation between oil and gold. They're highly correlated. I don't think uh, the price of the crude oil uh, is going to stay this low for much longer. It's going to go back up. 
Now, I wouldn't invest in um, oil companies. I mean, they're just destroyed. Who knows? I mean, a lot of them are going to go bankrupt. So is shale, especially. And that was all subsidized in the past 10 years. And I know they're getting bailouts, but they're just going to suffer forever, um, in my opinion. Because demand's not going to fully come back because we're about to go through the greatest depression humanity has ever seen. All right. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the price of oil isn't going to go up. I'm talking about the commodity itself. Now, yeah, you could trade uh, ETFs that follow the commodity itself. And I do. And I post that for the private members. But listen, when oil rebounds, and it will... Now, I'm not saying it's going to make new all-time highs anytime soon or anything like that. I'm just saying it's going to bounce back. Um, at least around... It's, right now, it's down around... It's on the left side, by the way. Uh, the price on the right side is for gold. That's the candlesticks. The left side's for oil. Uh, WTI is at like 14.55 right now, a barrel. I think by the this year's end, we'll get back up to at least 30, maybe higher, but at least 30, all right? So when that happens, and it will happen soon, as the lockdowns come off, it's going to help. That, that alone is also going to help metals go even higher. That's why Bank of America, BOFA, is predicting 3,000 gold. This year. Alright. And I predicted that last year. So. And like I said. Once it gets above 1800. There's no resistance for gold anymore. And we're going to new all time highs. And again. One of the guys in the private group. Uh, did some math. Most people are better. <laughs> at math than me. But anyways. Um. The mining companies in the ETFs are pr are priced at about a thousand two hundred fifty gold right now. Although gold's at seventeen thirty five right now, actually the futures it's like seventeen forty five. So once it gets like you know starts making new all time highs, Wall Street can't ignore that. I mean, how could they ignore the massive gains that are about to come? The moves in mining shares are gonna happen quickly, like very quick like you could miss out in like three days you're just gonna you might see 25 50 100 percent moves like out of nowhere so that's why it it really pays to be patient and just to hold gold silver ratio that's like at 140 historically all-time highs for currencies globally now again the the deflation inflation and i want to go a little more into detail about this the dollar is still king it's not king against metals but it's still king against emerging market currencies because they can't print and bail themselves out and everyone is still flocking to u.s equity markets and the dollar so as this world, as our world goes into this greatest depression ever, at the end of the day, people would still rather risk holding dollars and buying U.S. companies than holding their emerging companies. Now, in the future, in the near future, maybe three, five years from now, that's going to change and emerging markets are going to do better. But for now, during this risk off, a risky environment uh the u.s still looks better because it's again the cleanest shirt in a dirty hamper right so short term which could be and i don't know right but it could be short term could be next three months six months two years three years i don't know that's why we watch this and we change our minds as things develop right uh, capital flight still going to flow into U.S. equity markets and the dollar. That's why the Fed can print another 10, 20 trillion. That's why. Because the world allows it. Does that make sense now? 
and the world allows it because the lo the world is sort of stuck on this dollar reserve system and credit dollar debt system so that's that's what's happened here okay now you do see um the IMF and the world banks and this and that talking about baskets of currencies the SDR maybe backed with a portion of it, a percentage of it with gold, this and that. Th that's what they want to do. I don't think that's going to work out because uh, countries are really out for themselves. They don't trust them. They shouldn't. And, that, and nationalism pretty much is on the rise. So everyone's pretty much looking out for themselves. Again, like I said, Europe is on the brink. I think Europe's the next big domino to fall. China just pretty much fell. And everyone's going against China as well right now because of how this all played out. Um, and everyone's getting faulty test units, contaminate. It's bad. Um, anyways, I, th I could be wrong, right? I could be wrong about everything and all this. Consult your licensed financial advisor. I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Uh, but um, I do think Europe's in big trouble. Their banking system is just zombies. They're just nationalized pretty much. And I think every country is going to, because they have to print, they're going to break away. All right. So let's talk about the Dow. I think here there's a couple things going on right now, right? We're about to have earnings and they're just going to be horrendous. I mean, we have a uh, 127 earnings coming out, reports coming out tomorrow. Uh Tuesday 177, 233 Wednesday. Wednesday is also the next FOMC. Powell I think is going to talk I really hope he does. I, I, <laughs> we haven't heard him talk in a while, right? He's been hiding because he's been busy, uh, you know, at the burr machine, burr. <laughs> um, and then Thursday, there's 310. This this week's going to be huge. I think earnings are just going to be t terrible. And the next ones for the next quarter are going to be even worse probably. <laughs> so... Is the market going to ignore that these companies' earnings have been annihilated? They might because everyone's expecting it. I mean, everyone's we've been locked down, right? And this is kind of perfectly timed with the FOMC, although this was pre uh, the schedule is predetermined. Um, Powell's probably going to be. I mean, he's he's going to do a Mario Draghi. He's going to say he'll do whatever it takes. He's going to do that uh, this week, which will prop up the markets while these earnings come out. And I I bet Wall Street's going to decouple from, all, from any signs of reality uh, because these earnings will pretty much say that a lot of these companies are going to go under. But everyone's going to ignore that because the Fed and the bailouts. And there's going to be more bailouts. The, the, the Congress, they're going to approve more and more. There's a reason why the Treasury Department sort of merged with the Fed, which is completely you know unconstitutional, it's illegal, whatever. But, um, I mean, that's real Banana Republic stuff. Um, but the market knows that and the market has been conditioned for the over the past 10 years to not fight the fed just keep going along with the fed and the result of that is that the hell with fundamentals it's uh buy stocks by the dip now everyone's expecting the market to sell off a lot of people are saying buy the rumor sell the fact uh, the so by the rumor was this rebound here. Let me take it on the weekly. This is a monthly chart of the Dow. 
So here's a weekly chart of the Dow. Everyone's thinking this is a dead cat bounce. Buy the rumor, sell the fact, right? So this is the market forward looking. Buy the rumor. Now the lockdowns are coming off. Earnings are coming out. Sell the fact. And that may very well be the situation that we're about to experience. I don't know yet. But there's... I, I kind of think it's a 50-50 coin flip. That we either get this, and then we get a correction, and then they'll probably push it higher, or maybe some sideways trading for the next few weeks and months, the rest of this year. Or, I mean, Trump's going to come out, Mnuchin and Powell, and they're going to promise another, who knows, just trillions. And more bailouts. And everyone's going to ignore earnings. And they're going to reinflate this bubble, guys. And they can. Why? Because the world needs dollars. So the demand's there. And they could just keep printing and printing because of the global credit debt demand for dollars from emerging markets and the rest of the world. And Europe, if Europe's in big trouble, there's capital flights still coming out of Europe. And if the euro, if the euro itself, the currency falls, that that pretty much enables the Fed to print like who knows, another twenty trillion or something, and they will reinflate this bubble, and then we'll, we might actually, who knows, we'll either get close to testing all time highs. So it'll be either a giant bull trap, right? All right, this is hard to see now. Um, let's, uh, so follow me here. Watch. Uh, so this is a weekly chart of the Dow. So watch my screen. So this is either a dead cat bounce Earnings are really, really bad. Sentiment changes. Correction. I think this is least likely. Actually, least likely is probably this. Because they can't let that happen. Because if the, if the Dow and the equities fall any lower, the baby boomers are going to panic and pensions are going to just blow. Everything blows up. All right. So they're not going to allow that. And like I just said, the world is allowing us to keep printing. So it's either dead cat bounce, correction, maybe sideways action, or higher. Now I'm giving a lot of scenarios here. Or, believe it or not, We just go higher and we test uh, pre or we get really close to previous highs. But by this time, it's end of the year, right? And economic data earnings are really, really bad. And that was the giant bull trap, the Wall Street cheat sheet. And then we go down. Or the milkshake theory is still playing out. But the dollar isn't, it doesn't mean, that, I don't think the dollar is going to go much higher than the 100 handle. It might get to 110 or whatever. But that's only because Europe is in deep trouble and the emerging markets are in deep trouble as well and the demand is still there, right? But but if it is, that means that the Fed, that allows the Fed to print like another, who knows, 10 trillion or whatever. And then maybe they will take us to new all-time highs. Despite small businesses going under and the the real economy main street is in a depression i know it sounds insane but if you haven't noticed we live in an insane world okay so that is also very possible i don't know we're gonna find out uh personally i don't care because this entire time whatever happens Metals are going higher. There will be corrections later on. I just think there will be, like, again, 
watch my last video i talked about metals i don't i don't really want to talk about metals again because i pretty much covered in my last video um let's take a look at the news real quick oh nice i'm under 40 minutes uh a lot of americans are going on unemployment and a lot i mean this is probably going to be over 30 40 million who knows and they're actually making more money doing that which is just disgusting i mean this is there's no resemblance of free market guys that this literally incentivizes people not to go to work if that isn't inflationary i don't know what is And that just destroys the economy even more. See, U.S. banks are pulling back from lending to Europe. That could be strategic as well, believe me. Uh, so what else is going on? Uh, food shortages. I mean, there are stories of farmers having to slay their uh, livestock. Uh, continue here a lot of a lot of states in the u.s are coming off a lockdown will there be a second wave maybe or maybe by then people will just come to the realization this was just a flu bra anyways uh look towards other countries like hong kong uh, japan sweden um I don't know what's going on with this. Rumors, I don't know. I really don't care yet right now. What else is going on? Most Americans will be scared to return to malls when stores finally Listen, I was at um I was getting new tires put on. And this lady comes in and she's asking the the auto mechanic, right? Um, so do you guys use gloves and masks and this and that? And she sounded super concerned, even though she was wearing, like, it looked like, uh, like, <laughs> looked like underwear on her face, um, which does absolutely nothing. Right. And it was funny because I told her, I'm like, you know, it goes through your, you could get it through your eyes. And she's like, oh my God, really? Like, so I was super concerned. I was like freaking her out on purpose. It was funny. It's fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, people aren't going to go back to, um, they're not going to go to concerts. They're not going to go to malls or movie theaters. Probably for a while. Like, even if you see a 50% drop in uh, people going out, I mean, that's enough for, you know, to really impact the economy really, really badly. I mean, malls were barely afloat prior to this. Commercial real estate's gonna get hit so hard, guys. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Um, I mean, it already is getting hit hard. I so, I mean, that's common sense. You guys are smart enough. You guys know that. The, like I said, guys, the the good thing out of all this is people are seeing how draconian things could get, right? This is a good article. I posted it in the newsroom. It's free. Links below this video. Guys, there's like eight chat groups. If you didn't know. Uh, so the corporate debt, you know, all these companies that I was complaining about for the past few years that they've been doing corporate st stock buybacks. Um, yeah, though they and I told you guys when there's a bear market, they're going to get hit the hardest and they are, and they're also getting bailouts, right? Now the fed has to, you know, privatize gains, but socialize losses and who pays to bail out these, uh, reckless companies and CEOs and who got golden parachutes and, um, they also bought back their stock shares because they get bigger bonuses, right? Who bails them all out? These fat cats. We do. Uh, we don't directly, they don't pull it out of your paycheck. But you, like I said, your, your burger is going to cost more. Your food's going to cost more. 
But, you know, an average normie Joe Sixpack can't put two to two together because they go to public schooling. Um, again, conflicts are going to spur up globally with the energy crisis and historically um just look at the past wars um it was always right after uh great um depressions and whatnot i don't want to get into that in this video because i want to keep it under a certain amount uh warren buffett was hit hard good I'm just going to pretty much end it there, guys. Um, oh, here's another good thing. So people who pay rent, they're pretty much going on strike. For one, because the state told them you don't have to pay this month or next month. And once you give people that, it's really, really hard to take it away. And, you know, it's election year and... They, a lot of them probably don't have the money or they are on unemployment and they can pay it. I don't know, guys. We're going to see how this is going to play out. But uh, are they going to bail out all of the, um, the rentees, you know, people who own apartments and homes that they rent out? I... I don't know how this is going to work, but all of it is socialism. That's all it is. Um, again, nobody should get bailed out. Not even us. Uh, it, it What it does is when everyone gets a bailout, it just causes people to not take self-responsibility and uh, promotes... Um, it promotes irresponsibility basically i mean you're not a child everyone should save money and plan for rainy days that's I mean, that's common sense right but of course you know we don't live in that world anymore we're towards the tail end of uh an empire right and the good times for globally it's not just the u.s it's globally we've had the good times for about a hundred years now so we're probably gonna head towards some sort of darker ages anyways um carl icon great guy you know what carl icon's known for he um he finds badly and poor managed companies in distress he goes in there does a hostile takeover and then fixes the company makes it profitable again he's a real capitalist we need more people like him So, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, go to my website, Sale Ends Today, and um, yeah, uh, smash them likes, leave anything in the comment section. I will get to all the comments. I haven't commented back on the previous videos because I've been really busy lately. Uh, so, leave a comment, smash them likes, resubscribe. People have been getting um, unsubscribed. And now they're messing with the view counts on people's videos. Um, hopefully the alternatives will start gaining some traction. Hopefully, I don't know. I really don't. I, I, it sucks because I just don't have uh, confidence in the masses. They're so, um, I don't know. We'll see, guys. Hope for the best. Plan for the worst. Who cares? We're going to make it, right? Until next time.